Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got Stacey with me. Shalom. And today we're talking about whether or not we have to get baptized again. I know a lot of people have that question, and so I think we're about to give them the answer. Yeah, many people do have this question. We mention it often in our videos. Um, it's kind of on my heart to tell people that we actually are supposed to be baptized again. Um, if you remember my testimony, one of the first things that I did on this spiritual walk was to be baptized again. Mm -hmm. And in this video, we're going to talk about why it's necessary. Why do we have to do it again? Mm -hmm. Now, one of the first places that I want to bring you guys to is the Shepherd of Hermas down here in a book called Similitudes, where it's talking about the seal. Mm -hmm. We hear about that seal over in the book of Revelation as well. But here in the Shepherd of Hermas, it tells us what the seal is. Right. It tells us that the seal is water. Okay. So we get our seals through baptism. Okay. But then over here in the book of Barnabas, we learn that if we want to enter the temple, talking about the third temple, that spiritual temple, we have to have the remission of our sins in order to purify us to a state that we can be in this so-called or be a part of this so-called third temple. Mm -hmm. But we learn in the book of Barnabas that we get that purity by the remission of our sins. Right. And then over in the book of Matthew, we learn that we get the remission of our sins through baptism. Okay. And the problem is, even after we have been baptized and received the seal, we can actually break that seal. Right. Yeah. Rendering that seal ineffective and making it so that we actually have to do it again. So you're saying that we can do things or sin and have um, our seal sort of like broken. And so through baptizing, we can get it. I guess, repaired again. Right. They get the remission of our sins. But not all sins do this. There's only certain sins we're going to learn here in this video that gets us what the scripture calls cut off, mm -hmm. separates us from the father, breaks the covenant that we have with him and puts us back in that state that we were in even before we were baptized the first time. Yeah, now I remember you talking about this even on the recording that we just did. And one of the ways you said was breaking the Sabbath. Yep, uh, breaking the Sabbath day, we're gonna find out is one of them, but let's step down through these and let's look at each one of the cases that the Torah tells us that we can actually get cut off, okay. separated from the covenant. Um, let's just look through these. One of the first time we see it mentioned down here is in Genesis chapter 17, verse 14. Mm -hmm. You wanna read that? Okay. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised that soul shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. So this individual has broken the covenant. This is the Abrahamic covenant, which talks about circumcision. Any child that has not been circumcised, any male child that is, is actually going to be cut off from his people or cut off from the covenant. Now, this is where um, I can't remember if it's Abraham or Moses' wife. Uh, was sort of angry at him because he had not circumcised his child. Well, it kind of reads like that. Mm -hmm. But when you listen to the legend of the Jews side of the story, how it goes, it was actually her who saved Moses' life. That, okay. that angel was going, he came to destroy Moses. Okay. He was actually going to kill Moses because Moses, under the instruction from his father-in-law, did not circumcise his first child and was not planning on circumcising the second child either. Mm -hmm. But Zipporah, Moses' wife, saw the angel, saw the angel standing before Moses getting ready to kill him. And she hurried off and circumcised the children. So does this go along with the cut off from the covenant? Absolutely. He, those children were cut off, even putting Moses in a state that he was being affected by his children breaking this covenant. Okay. But the main thing we need to understand here is that any person, any male that's not circumcised is in a cut off state. Okay. They are and have broken the covenant, um, the Abrahamic covenant. And what we're going to find out is anytime you break any of these covenants, you're actually going to get cut off. Okay. Well, that's, you know, that's, that's amazing in today's time because we know that when you do present your child at the hospital, they give you the choice. Yeah, absolutely. If right. you want your child to be a Gentile or a heathen, or if you want your child to be within the Abrahamic covenant, yeah, we all have that choice. Right. 
You see there in Exodus chapter 4 and 25 where it talks about Zippor taking that sharp rock mm -hmm. and um, circumcising the child. But that's a different kind of cut off there with the foreskin than we see down here in Exodus chapter 12 and verse 15, which is talking about the feast day. Okay. Will you go ahead and read that? Okay. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. So breaking the feast of unleavened bread, if you eat leavening during that week, you actually get cut off. Hmm. And we learned in the New Testament that leavening is the doctrine of the church, the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, who mm -hmm. today we would know as the church. Mm -hmm. So anybody who's partaking in that doctrine or that leavening during that week will actually get cut off. Right. Well, this is why the Catholic Church, I believe, determined Easter to always fall during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So you would intentionally get cut off. They are actually getting us cut off every year. You remember that the year starts two weeks before the Feast of Passover or mm -hmm. two weeks before Unleavened Bread. So you're only into the year by two weeks when this feast occurs. And then all of a sudden they have Easter Sunday to fall right in the middle of that Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is leavening. So therefore they are getting us cut off every year. At mm -hmm. least those who are down there still in the church or being cut off every year right at the beginning of the year and it is intentional right mm -hmm. this is how they keep the power over their people you gotta remember these feast days are a liberation for our father's people giving them the opportunity to live under his kingship live with him being our ruler and our provider but by getting us cut off, now we have to depend on them to take care of us. And of course, they do so by enslaving us. Yeah, we are now separated from the Father um, when we do participate in these um, pagan feasts. Yeah, we get ourselves cut off. And so thereby we have to depend on them right. as our provider. So they're doing it intentional. You see it mentioned again down there in verse 19. He says, even if you find leavening in your house during that time, you're going to be cut off. So this is the reason that we gather uh, the few books that we have. I remember when we first started, we had um, like a trunk load mm -hmm. of books because that's where we stored them. But I can say we probably have less than 10. Uh, less than, well, and some of the books we were counting as leavening weren't actually leavening. Like, mm -hmm. for instance, the Concordance. Right. You know, I always mm -hmm. took that one out. But it really doesn't have any leavening in it. Right. It just, mm -hmm. it, it, it's just, I was erring on the side of caution. So any book that talked about scripture that wasn't actually scriptural, I took it out of the house. Yeah. So that would be books like Josephus. Yeah. Some of the books that we um, have here are like our timeline charts yeah. and things like that. that and we, the, you know, take out just to, just for caution. And the kids' school books. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, they um, being homeschool books, some of them have a lot of um, scriptural information in it, which, of course, is leavening. Mm -hmm. And we would take those out. So, yeah, we would end up with a trunk load of these books that we right. would take out every year. But by doing so, we prevented ourselves from being cut off. Right. It says mm -hmm. right here we will be cut off from the congregation of Israel if we had failed to do so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you think about how many people around the world are failing to do so, failing to get the leavening out of their house. Right. Mm -hmm. This is why there are so many people cut off right now. Okay. So I remember at one time also we would take the yeast out of our house. As that too. Yeah. Because, you know, it the, script, the way the scripture reads um, in the Old Testament, especially, we understand yeast to be that agent that makes the bread rise. Right. So we would actually take it out too. And we still do. Yeah. We still take that leavening out and the baking soda baking and powder. the yeast and mm -hmm. the baking powder. Yeah. We and, do it all. <laughs> yeah. And making sure to get those other books and stuff out of the house and being sure not to listen to any church programs or anything during that week because it gets us cut off one of the things that you always tell um on your channel is to not even listen to your channel absolutely i don't listen to my own channel during that week we don't want any chance of actually partaking in this leavening so yeah we shut Hermes academy down but now the next verse that we see that talks about being cut off is exodus chapter 30 in verse 33 mm -hmm. you want to look at that one okay it says whosoever compounded any like it 
or whosoever putteth any of it upon a stranger shall even be cut off from his people. This is talking about the spices that they use to make the incense. Okay. So what it's saying is if you actually try to make that incense on your own, you're going to get yourself cut off. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it talks about the same thing down in verse 38. Whosoever shall make like unto that to smell thereto shall even be cut off from his people. So it tells us what the ingredients are right. for the incense in the scripture. And if you go out and try to compound this stuff and put it together, you're actually going to get yourself cut off. Right. right. And it should be noted that's one of the only things like that. You know, everything else we are invited to partake in except these these incense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are reserved for the temple. But let's look at the next verse down here talking about the Sabbath day. This is uh, chapter 31, verse 14. Okay. It says, you shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth shall surely be put to death, for whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. So here enters the Catholic Church again, mm -hmm. because they've changed the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. They've gotten people to actually keep Sabbath day on a planetary week. Days like Sunday is on the planetary week, and those days don't fall on the sacred calendar at all. Mm -hmm. the, there was no such thing as a Saturday or a Sunday in the time of our Messiah, and it wasn't even a thought back there with Moses when it was being written. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to go by the celestial calendar, but by keeping it on the wrong day, the Catholic Church is causing many of their followers, all of their followers, no doubt, to actually defile the Sabbath day. Right. And they went even further. You know, they talked about if you are to rest on the Sabbath day, that would be Judaizing the Sabbath day. Mm. So they actually encouraged their people to work on the Sabbath day and to go shopping on the Sabbath day and to cook on the Sabbath day. That's why they have Sunday meals, mm. which is in direct conflict with what we are supposed to be doing on the Sabbath day. They make sure they have a Sunday meal every Sunday. They can't even go a week without being cut off. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you think back in the times when you were first baptized right. and you were brought into the fold. Mm -hmm. Well, you were cut off almost immediately because you broke the Sabbath day. Right. Mm -hmm. Even if it did fall on a Sunday that week, you did things like mow the grass and go to Walmart or mm -hmm. go to the restaurant or cook a meal. Mm -hmm. And you broke the Sabbath day. And right. so you were cut off. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, the next time we see the phrase cut off is down here in Leviticus chapter seven and verse 20. Okay. But the soul that eateth of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings that pertain unto the Lord, having his uncleanness upon him, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. So if you are partaking in the sacrifices and you haven't cleansed yourself properly, this is going to get you cut off. Mm -hmm. You defiling these sacrifices, mm -hmm. you know, touching these things potentially make them unclean altogether mm -hmm. and you're getting cut off. Now, verse 21 probably says something similar. More so over the soul that shall touch any unclean thing as the uncleanliness of man or any unclean beast or any abominable unclean thing and eat of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which pertain unto the Lord, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. Right. So if we are invited to these sacrifices, we have to be sure that we are in a clean state before we go down there, else we could end up getting ourselves cut off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then it talks about, you know, the unclean thing or the uncleanliness of man and all of that's covered in Leviticus. Right. You know what, what all of that means. Mm -hmm. But let's look at verse 25. For whosoever eateth the fat of the beast of which men offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, even the soul that eateth it shall be cut off from his people. Right. When we're told to make the sacrifices, um, we're told that the fat, we're supposed to burn the fat as well as the blood on the altar. Mm -hmm. If we fail to do that, then we're going to get cut off by eating it. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's look at uh, 27. Whatsoever soul it be that eateth any manner of blood, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. So you're saying I can't have that juicy ribeye? Not rare, but uh, <laughs> you better get it up to about 160 <laughs> degrees to be sure that it is denatured and draw all of the blood out. Mm -hmm. When you get it up to that certain temperature, I believe it's about 160 degrees. It may, may not be that hot, but what happens is the fat actually starts pushing through the veins and actually pushes all of the blood out. Right. That's why on Passover, we're told to 
roast the lamb over the fire until it falls off the bone. Mm -hmm. Well, when it starts to fall off the bone, you can be sure that it is well done. Right. And all of the blood has fell down into the fire. Mm -hmm. Well, if you like your steak rare and you don't let it go through the process of getting all of that blood out, you're going to end up being cut off. Right. And this is a lot of people here in the world. Right. We may not be eating the fat from the sacrifices, but there are many people who are eating the blood through this rare meat and not cooking it properly. And you've done a class on this. Done plenty of classes on this is um very, very important. This actually goes back to the Noadic covenant. Which mm -hmm. in the Noahic covenant, the covenant given to Noah, he was told not to eat any blood whatsoever. Told he was told he could eat anything, including reptiles and all kinds of stuff. But he was told never to eat the blood of any animal because that's the life of the animal. Right. Mm -hmm. But we learn here that by doing so, you will get yourself cut off. Right. Now let's look down in chapter seventeen and verse four. Okay, this is in Leviticus. Says, and bring it unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation to offer an offering unto the Lord before the tabernacle of the Lord. Blood shall be imputed unto the man. He has shed blood and that man shall be cut off from among his people. So this should ring out to the hunters and the farmers, those who raise animals. Anytime we slaughter or dispatch one of these animals, we have to take it before the congregation of the people, meaning we have to pray over this mm -hmm. and make sure we are handling this meat properly. Mm -hmm. That's what the Jewish community would talk about when they talk about kosher meat. Right. It's because it's actually gone through this particular process that the scripture talks about. Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't do this, you can actually get cut off. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's real important. Um, like I say, especially those who are hunters and those who raise animals for meat. We have to go through this process, else we're going to get ourselves cut off. Right. All right, let's look at verse 9. And bring it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation to offer it unto the Lord, even that man should be cut off from among his people. You're going to get cut off if we don't bring this right. meat before the tabernacle of the congregation. And we have to remember that these laws, these rules were actually put in place before there was ever a temple mm -hmm. in place. The mm -hmm. covenant was given mm -hmm. even before they had reared up the tabernacle in the wilderness. It's, it's not really saying that we have to take this before a building or something like that, um, a certain place. Is, is talking about how we are to take it before the tabernacle of the congregation, which is referring to the third temple. We basically have to take it before the Lord, pray over this meat, else we can get ourselves cut off for yeah. killing these animals. Right. All right, let's see if verse 14 is along the same lines. For it is the life of all flesh. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, you shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh, for the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. Yeah. So again, talking about eating of the blood there. And um, it's going to get us cut off because like it says, it is the life of the animal. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to chapter 18, verse 29. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the soul that commits them shall be cut off from among their people. Now, these are some rules that we're seeing here in that chapter. Things like um, lion with a beast, mm -hmm. uh, bestiality, I think they call that, gets you cut off. Uh, letting their seed pass through the fire to Molech. Um, they um, do that even to today through some of these secret societies and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Basically killing the firstborn child is what they were doing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's supposed to give them prosperity i guess because they have separated their family from our father mm. they don't have a levite anymore as they threw mm. them in the fire and so now they can live these prosperous gentile lives mm -hmm. i guess but there's a lot of rules in this chapter um homosexuality is listed there in 22 mm -hmm. um gets you cut off mm -hmm. if you lie carnally with your neighbor's wife that's actually going to get you cut off mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of them in here. Um, sleeping with a woman and her mother. Right. If you uncover the nakedness of your brother's wife. Right. Or your daughter-in-law. Other forms of incest will get you cut off. And like I said, this whole chapter talks about that. This is chapter 18. So we might want to check out that chapter as we're not covering all of these. And probably to 
be a good idea for all of these verses to go back and look at these to make sure we understand what it is that can potentially get us cut off because none of us actually want to be in that state. Yeah. We don't want to make a mistake and then uh, have to learn later. Yeah, and you know, in today's time, a lot of these um, practices are, you know, acceptable or um, we see them and we don't say anything about them, but, you know, the Father says no, and He gives us the um, command that He's you know, it's just going to cut us off. Yeah. Yeah. So regardless of even if they are acceptable today, um, he still says that they're an abomination. And for that, we will be cut off. And then down here in chapter 19 and verse 8 is also talking about sacrifices. This one is talking particularly about the peace offering, mm -hmm. saying that you have to eat it within two days. Right. Yeah. So you can't really store up these offerings if you if you make a sacrifice as a peace offering, which is what you would do at a barbecue. A barbecue is kind of a peace offering mm -hmm. where you burn the fat and the blood, but you actually end up eating the meat. Right. That's like I said, what we would call a barbecue. Well, if you do that unto the Lord, you have two days to actually eat it. Else, like you see there in verse 8, you will actually get cut off right. if you eat it on the third day. Right. So you can't um, take those little plates and put them in the freezer. No. <laughs> you have to eat it or throw it away. And, you know, this could go back in the day when, you know, this food would spoil or something mm -hmm. like that after so long. Mm -hmm. So you could imagine, you know, somebody... Um, trying to hold on to this sacrifice, but yet it was so many days that the food was going bad. Right. And so they're eating rotten meat as a mm -hmm. sack. Yeah. But got to be more severe than that because, you know, getting cut off is a big deal. Right. So mm -hmm. now let's jump down to chapter 20 in verse 17. Okay. And if a man shall take his sister, his father's daughter, or his mother's daughter, and see her nakedness, and she sees his nakedness, it is a wicked thing, and they shall be cut off in the sight of their people. He hath uncovered his sister's nakedness. He shall bear his iniquity. Right. So if they somehow, and you can imagine how this is happening, what's about to go on here. But if they even see each other's nakedness, if both of them are naked in the same room, then they're going to get cut off. Right. Both of them, both the male and the woman, even though it's kind of blaming the male here, saying that he's doing this. Mm -hmm. And then look at verse 18. And if a man shall lie with a woman having her sickness, and shall uncover her nakedness. He hath discovered her fountain, and she hath uncovered the fountain of her blood, and both of them shall be cut off from among their people. So that time of the month. Right. Is a, really, you're not even supposed to be sleeping in the same bed during that time of the month. Mm -hmm. Because it actually makes you unclean mm -hmm. to touch her bed during mm -hmm. that week. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she is unclean, and anybody who touches her bed is unclean. Mm -hmm. Right? But... That's just being unclean. This is talking about being cut off. Right. If you actually go ahead and lie with her, right. you're going to get cut off altogether. Right. And this is why we do this, because a lot of people don't actually know these rules. Mm -hmm. So let's look at 22 verse 3. Say unto them, Whosoever he be of all your seed among your generations that goeth unto holy things, with the children of Israel hollow unto the Lord, Having his uncleanliness upon him, that soul shall be cut off from my presence. I am the Lord. So this is what we we're talking about earlier, touching the clean things, and yet you are unclean, mm -hmm. right? And again, there are many rules that make us unclean. Uh, sleeping with our wife makes us unclean. Touching the carcass of dead animals makes us unclean. There are many rules that make us unclean, but we might want to check out the book of Leviticus and the other books so that we are sure so especially when these feast days coming up on us that we're not unclean when we go in to partake in these mm -hmm. and, and, and these things. And we got a question not so many years ago. If the child, if the little girl who happens to be on her cycle during the Feast of Unleavened Bread or the Passover, is she allowed to take part in the Passover meal? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you guys help us out in the comment section. What do you think about that? You know, it's talking about having the uncleanliness upon us, but the child has to eat something. Mm -hmm. Right. So by her eating of the meal during that week, does that get her cut off? This is serious business. I don't I don't know because it's not included in those rules that tell you that you can actually keep the Passover in the second month. 
So we have to look really closely at that. And again, that's why we do these classes. Um, this is where the Bible study is. Right. You know, it's, right. Mm -hmm. it, it's not a matter of if we should be doing these rules or not. You know, it's really a matter of how exactly do we get these things right. You yeah, know? you know, it's very important. You know, little things that um, we think or we don't think about. The, you know, the Father has set rules and, and statutes for us to follow. So, you know, that's the reason that you do these classes so that we will know. And so you won't think that you are not cut off and you actually are. Yeah, many people are in a, a cut off state and they don't know it. I right. don't even know it. Mm -hmm. um, I was too at one point. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And like I said, I had a pastor who told me to get baptized again. He didn't tell me why. He may not even knew why. But it was one of the best things that, you know, ever happened to me because it actually helped me to make that connection that had been severed. Mm -hmm. I, I'd basically been cut off. I'd been baptized the first time when I was about 16 years old. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know anything about these rules or these laws or maybe not all of them. But, you know, many of these ones that we talked about before um, mm -hmm. would have gotten me cut off way back then. So when he, you know, gave you this, these instructions, you just followed them blindly, you know, just for the sake of, okay, you know what you're talking about. I'm going to go do them. And, you know, turns out that it was, I guess, a blessing to you. Absolutely. And actually that second baptism, I believe this is universal, but that second baptism is what thrusted me into the ministry for the first time. Right. You know, it's when I started reading the scripture, even started teaching the scripture in the churches and mm -hmm. such. Mm hmm and I've heard the testimony of a lot of people who say the same thing. You know, it's kind of like that first baptism. Um, they didn't notice any changes in their life. But mm -hmm. the second baptism, they became a preacher. Mm -hmm. But And again, you guys tell me y'all's testimony. Have y'all experienced anything like that? Um, it's not written in the scripture anywhere. It's just observation. But what do y'all think? Mm -hmm. Let's go on to chapter 23 and verse 29. Okay. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. Now, this is talking about the Day of Atonement. That's what I was wondering, right? Absolutely. We have to afflict our souls on the Day of Atonement. If we don't afflict our soul, meaning we go about our day joyous as if, you know, it's just a regular old day, we're going to end up getting cut off. Mm -hmm. End up in going back to being a Gentile or heathen or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. basically separating us from our people. Right. So when it comes to the feast days, you notice the only ones really mentioned so far is Atonement Day and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Not right. keeping those two will definitely get you cut off if you don't do them right. All right. Now let's jump down to Numbers chapter 9 and verse 13. Okay. But the man that is clean... And it's not in a journey and forbear to keep the Passover, even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people, because he brought not the offering of the Lord in his appointed season, that man shall bear his sin. So here's talking about Passover. Right. And a lot of people connect Passover with unleavened bread, mm -hmm. but it's actually two different feasts. One. I did not know that. I thought, you know, at one time I did not know that. Yeah. I thought they were the exact same feast. And I believe one of the reasons why people think they're the same is because like when you read in Leviticus chapter 23, it doesn't give you a lot of rules, a lot of things to do on Passover. Right. It just tells you this is the Passover. Mm -hmm. It's really only when you get to the New Testament that we find out what it is we're supposed to be doing on Passover. Mm -hmm. I mean, we learn about the lamb and putting the blood on the doorpost. Mm -hmm. But in the New Testament with the Messiah, we learn that we're supposed to be doing communion, right. which gets us the remission of our sins every year. Mm -hmm. Well, if we don't do that, if we don't keep the Passover, this is going to get us cut off. Mm -hmm. So Passover and unleavened bread. And again, this is why the Catholic Church does their thing, why they've picked that season in order to have their festivals. Like we said, it's to get them cut off. It's to get the whole Catholic Church and half of the Christian Church cut off by missing these feast days or defiling them. Mm -hmm. That's why the book of Revelation tells you to deal treacherously with them as they have done treacherously with us, talking about the Catholic Church. Right. Not a very good organization, according to the book of Revelation. But let's go on to Numbers chapter 15 and verse 30. But the soul that doeth ought presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproached the Lord, and that soul shall be cut off from among his people. This is also talking about atonement. 
saying again if you assume that we don't have to keep the fast or we don't have to do anything on atonement day then you're gonna get cut off mm -hmm. this kind of points back to the apocalypse of elijah where in the early verses it talks about how there are those who are rise up in the end times that tell you you don't have to afflict your soul on atonement day at all mm -hmm. they tell you don't have to keep the fast and it tells you that these people are not grounded in the faith at all and well, they could be operating under these sinister forces that are actually attempting and trying to get people cut off as fast as right. they can. Right. Verse 31 is probably along the same lines. Because he hath despised the word of the Lord and hath broken his commandment, that soul shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. Talking about atonement day. And we find out back in Leviticus chapter 23 that if you work on atonement day then you will be destroyed altogether mm. it's a very very serious feast um that we're supposed to be keeping every year talking about the day of atonement all right now let's look at uh chapter 19 and verse 13 whosoever touches the dead body of any man that is dead and purifies not himself the foul of the tabernacle of the lord and that soul shall be cut off from Israel, because the water of separation was not sprinkled upon him. He shall be unclean. His uncleanliness is yet upon him. And the scripture tells us how to make this uh, water of separation. We did a class. Yeah, we did a class on this uh, a little while ago. Um, it actually involves the red heifer um, and a whole burnt offering to make this water. But this, wa this water of separation... Uh, we refer to it as holy water is used when we touch a dead body if you have to handle a dead body you have to get this water of separation else you're going to be cut off mm -hmm. did we read verse 20 but the man that shall be unclean and shall not purify himself that soul shall be cut off from among the congregation because he hath defiled the sanctuary of the lord the water of separation has not been sprinkled upon him. He is unclean. Yeah, so I'm talking about, you know, again, touching these dead bodies. One of our moderators to our channel was telling us the other day that she used to be a firefighter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's come in contact with a lot of people, a lot of dead bodies over the years trying to save their life. You know, the person has a heart attack and they don't make it. Mm -hmm. Well, there you are giving them CPR at the time that they enter the spirit world. You or even nurses or even doctors. Nurses and doctors, you've yeah. just touched the dead body. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you do? Are right. you cut off for forever? Is right. there any way back in? Right. No, well, we can go through a baptism again and be repurified again. Right. Go through the water and actually be purified again and brought back into the fold. This is why we tell people you have to be baptized again. Right. You know, right. and you know, so if your family member, you know, is not responsive to you when you're talking to them about holy things or scriptural things or feast days or anything like that, if they just in complete rejection of everything holy, it's probably because they're in this cut off state for one reason or the other. Yeah. And that's why this class is so important. You know, it's not to just have a bunch of you can't do this, you can't do that. But also uh, it's to let us know that, that you don't have to stay in this state forever that you can come out of being cut off uh, just by being baptized. Yeah, look, then the shepherd of Hermes he says he has a remedy for us, for mm. those who have done this. Well, we find out that this remedy is actually being rebaptized again. We can go through the whole process again, renewing us so that we can become part of this temple like we read about over in the book of the epistle of Barnabas. And there are several other times we see the phrase cut off, but I think the only other one that's relevant is down in the book of Malachi in chapter 2. Talking about those who have married these uh, daughters of these strange gods because it's going to end up, you know, causing them to uh, make sacrifices under idols mm -hmm. and, and that kind of thing. But that's it. I mean, I went through all of them and these are the rules um, other than the ones we didn't cover back there in Leviticus chapter 18, I believe it was, um, these are what gets us cut off. Right. And, you know, this is a lot of stuff. It covers a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to get a full understanding of what is meant by cut off, what, what does scripture say or is meant by when you say one is cut off? Now, that's a good question. Uh, went into the interlineal Bible to look up the word cut off. 
and we find it at Strong's number 3772, but you see the last letter in the Hebrew is actually the Tau. Right. You notice there that it's talking about the mark, the sign, the cross, the seal, the covenant. Mm -hmm. So it has something to do with the covenant. Mm -hmm. And then when we come and look at the other letters, the first letter was the Kef, which makes the K sound, referring to the palm of the hand or to allow to cover or to open the hand. Then you have the resh or the R sound, which is a head or a person or the highest. Basically what it's saying is that you are breaking the covenant. You're no longer under the covenant. Right. You separated from from the covenant like we see there in the, in the towel. He's right. lifted his hands up off of you. Mm -hmm. you know, no longer are you a member of his congregation. You're no longer a part of his people. Right. You're no longer under his fold or under the agreement that you he made with you. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like we said, you don't have to stay. We don't we understand that you don't have to stay in this cut off state. If it be the if it were the case, we would all be cut off. Right. Mm -hmm. Because nobody ever explained baptism to us. And I, I know they didn't explain it to me. They never told me what I was doing. No, I remember when I first got baptized, I think I was maybe six or seven. And, you know, they just called you in front of the church and they sprinkled the water on your head and you were baptized and you never, you know, knew anything else about it. You never, you know, was given a, a teaching about it. You just knew that you was baptized. And like you said, you don't know about it. You don't. You know, it's just something your parents made you do. And so now that you know that this is a remedy for, you know, being cut off, I think it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, well, they, what they should have did was they should have explained to us what was going on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they should have taught us the law so that we would have never allowed ourselves to get cut off. But they, they didn't understand it. Right. You know, the Catholic Church never told them. Right. And they were cut off too, more than likely. Mm -hmm. And so there was no instruction that came with it. And the first thing we did was went and got ourselves cut off. Like I said, within a week, you probably broke the Sabbath day. Within within eight days, you had gotten cut off again. Or probably that same day, because it's more than likely it was on a Sunday for myself. And then we went and had Sunday dinner. It was food sacrificed in the idols. Mm -hmm. Because it was they that food that they're cooking was to the sun god. That's why it's a Sunday dinner. It's for they Sunday worship, worship of the sun god. And so, yeah, you're probably right. As soon as you ate that food, you were eating food sacrifice on the idol. So you got yourself cut off. Mm -hmm. Or they got you cut off because I, I believe a lot of this is intentional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for those of you guys who are cut off and, you know, chances are if you're watching this video, you're not in that state. If you are, you know, you can come over and check out this a book called the Dachi or the Epistle of the Apostles, which talks about how it is that we're supposed to be baptized right. down there in chapter seven. And we've done classes on how to baptize uh, people. We can actually baptize each other. Mm -hmm. We don't have to worry about the Catholics or anybody else. We can baptize our wife and our wife can baptize us. And, you know, we can baptize the children. And here in this chapter, it kind of tells us what it is that we are supposed to be doing mm -hmm. as far as baptism is concerned. Right. And so we can actually go through the process. You know, we don't have to stay in that cut off state. Right. All right. So I wanted to share this with you guys. If you got anything out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't hit the dislike button, but leave us a comment either way. And shalom. Shalom.